Hey everyone, so on this episode of Make It With Calvin, I'm gonna be showing you the heat set insert press in action here on some parts for the modified GoPro rig. That's right, all those years later, still finding ways to make it better. So let's dive into it, shall we? Okay, so the original plan still stands. I'm using these chonky quarter by 20 inserts on both ends of the handle here. So we have the ability, say a handle breaks or we wanna change the length of it or anything like that, or we even need to tear it down so we can fit it into a bag or something. We have that ability still with the rig and definitely these quarter 20 inserts are a lot harder to install than the little M5 ones that are used to hold the screw assembly in place for locking the camera in, but I was able to pull that off. Now, the only bummer with the 3D ZW Man rig is the fact that the insert uh, tip sizes only went up to an M5, and technically I needed an M6 to install the quarter by 20. So, Went on Amazon and for 10 bucks picked up a Shine On, I believe it is, brass insert kit. All I had to do was change out the heat barrel so it would fit the new inserts and it works all the same. It really doesn't matter. So that was nice. Now when it comes to the actual heat press rig itself, for this I'm actually making the most of the fact that it is height adjustable and I've taken the bottom, you could say, stop here so you could repeatedly put parts in and I'm actually just using it to lock the whole rig into the tall position right here. Now it's not turned on right now but the reason behind that is the length of this part is such that here let me lift it up so you can see it it's such that there is a little bit of clearance between the bottom of the part and there and if this was taller and if I had say like a one two three block that I could rest the part on right here I'd probably use it with the roller bearing action but when I originally installed these it was easy enough just to hold this close enough to vertical put the little insert in there and press it in and if for whatever reason it was not lined up perfectly PLA is easy enough to work with I could always just warm it up and you know screw into it gently and straighten it out but I haven't had any problems with it. So enough talk aside, let's actually use this in action and we'll see how it goes. All right, I'm gonna do my best to do this while also showing you what's going on. So sorry if I'm gonna be in the background here, kind of, you know, funky. So let me get this on and get the heat set and then we'll go from there. Okay, I've just set this to an arbitrary number I've kind of found that the heat rating on this does not necessarily mean that's the heat output you're going to get at the tip, but it's PLA, so hey, it doesn't care. It softens easy enough. So I have the part and I have the insert, so I'm just going to set the insert into the hole there. One tip I did is I actually tapered the hole so that way I can kind of push the insert in a little bit. So it somewhat self-centers and then when I actually hit it with the heat, it just pops right in there and it goes super easy. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to carefully line the tip up and give it a minute to heat up and boom, it's in there. That's all there is to it. Now obviously if you're using this with the mechanism, we'll just pretend that we're installing an insert you would line up on the part and then just push down until you either hit the stop or you hit the part, you know, where you get the insert just below flush with the part and that's all there is to it. So let me, whoops, reset this real quick. And we'll do the other two while we're here. Might as well. The nice thing is the actual tip insert tool, if you want to call it that, is actually designed to be a very tight fit to the threads, partly so you can get all the heat energy into that insert. 
and partly to line things up as well. It's it's quite nice. So and even if I don't insert it, you know, straight initially, it tends to work itself in there. And one thing to keep in mind is if you're using big old inserts like these quarter 20s, it definitely takes a while for it to dump enough heat from the iron, which really is not very powerful. I think it's a claimed uh, 60 watt iron, which for general soldering purposes is probably fine. It was more intended for small scale soldering, but you figure with something big like this, it's gonna take a long time for that brass to even start to warm up and more time after that to even get hot enough to do anything. So one thing I might try in the future is if I have a small hot plate or something like that, just putting it on there to kind of get it above ambient temperature, a bit like preheating when welding or soldering, get it hot, then you, when you put it in there, it doesn't take as much heat to get it to the melting point. My only concern is if I do try and install these into, say, a nylon material, is there gonna be enough heat in the iron to pull that off? That definitely might be more of a preheat job, and I just use this more as a guide tool, but at this rate, that's probably a couple months out. I still have to flash the firmware on my X2 so I can actually get hot enough to print it, but you know, that's all problems for a later time and date. Now as for me, I need to finish up getting these GoPro rigs ready, of which I will definitely have a video on them, because Memorial Day weekend, Danielle and I are going out to the Grand Canyon, we're doing a four-wheel Jeep tour, and you know dang well we want to film that. So, if you guys will excuse me, I'm going to get out of here, but I'll see you here next time on Make It With Calvin, and if you do want to pick up one of these, or any of the inserts that I'm using, or stuff like that, I'll have some Amazon affiliate links down below. It definitely helps the channel out because we all know the ads, they aren't worth very much. So, hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll see you next time on Make It With Calvin.